everyone, it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration here every single Money Wednesday and Friday. And before we jump into today's tutorial, I wanna thank Bellway for sponsoring today's video. Recently, I added this Bellway natural fiber supplement to my daily routine. Likely, you're probably not getting enough fiber in your diet as it would take 10 salads to equal the daily recommended 30 grams. So this is such a simple way to add fiber to your diet. You just add two teaspoons to eight ounces of liquid. I also like to put it in my green smoothies in the morning. Super easy way and it's also great for on the go. Not having enough fiber in your diet is also linked to having a higher risk of colon cancer as well as heart disease. And my dad is actually a colon cancer survivor. And my mom also had a heart attack in her late 30s, which I am fast approaching. So this this is a great way to help me stay healthy and hopefully avoid those things that are definitely in my family's history. The one that I have been enjoying is this mixed berry flavor, but they also have other options like lemon lime and raspberry lemon. The other great thing about this product is that it is vegan, organic, gluten-free, keto, paleo, and it's also a prebiotic. So make sure to check the link that I'll have down in the description box with also a coupon code for 25% off your first order. Order. I'm so excited about today's tutorial, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I have some scrap wood here. That's kind of the idea is to just use some scrap wood, but I will include sizes. So if you do have to purchase supplies and you know exactly what I'm using. Uh, the first one here is gonna be the largest one. It is a one by eight. Also, I thought it'd be cute to give it a roof. So I have some one by twos here. Then to make a smaller scale version of this one, I have a one by six. And these are paint stir sticks. I order these off Amazon and I use them for all kinds of different projects. I will link these down in the description box. Super easy to work with and they're a real thin wood, so they're easy to cut. I thought they'd make a really cute roof on this one. And the next one I have is also about the size of a one by six, but it is the top of a picket fence, so it's cedar wood. Uh, I used this to create my window box, and if you missed that video, I'll link that down below. Um, but this is the top part that I cut off, but I didn't want to just throw it away because it's still wood, still works great. So we're gonna turn this into one of the wood houses, but I'm not gonna put a roof on this one just to make something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and work on the biggest one first, the one by eight. I'm gonna measure up to eight inches, put a little mark. This is where I'm going to cut my board down to length. So I'm gonna just cut it square and straight right there. Then I'm gonna measure up four inches on each side, put a little mark on each side of the one by eight. And this is going to give me my stopping point as far as my roof goes. So once I get this cut straight, I'm going to adjust my miter saw to 45 degrees, and then I'm gonna cut from the middle of the board down at an angle to those four inch marks I just made. And now we're gonna work on the roof. So I'm gonna make these pretty simple. The first piece of one by two, I'm going to line up with the angle of this side of the roof so it's flush. And then I'm gonna take the second one by two and I'm gonna line it up with the angle of the first one by two. So now it is flush up here on the top and on the side. So I'm just gonna make a little mark about how long I want my roof to go. And we're gonna take these over to the miter saw and we're gonna cut these stood up in our saw like this instead of laying down on the side. We're gonna sit it up on its side and we're gonna cut this at 45 degree angle as well.
So here's my first little house. I thought I would give you a measurement for each one of these. So maybe it'll make it a little bit easier, especially if you're using a one by eight as a base from this smaller piece from end to the longest point is six inches. And this one from one side to the longest point is six and seven eighths inches. And now on to this one by six, even though it is skinnier, I want it to be taller than this house. So this is about 10 inches tall. I'm not gonna cut it down at all, but I am. I did find the center here and that's where I'm gonna cut my 45 degree angles on. For this house, I'm gonna use my paint stir sticks as the roof. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just overlap at the top. So one is a little bit longer than the other. The great thing about these is that they are really thin wood. So you can use either a heavy duty pair of scissors, you can use a razor blade to cut them, you can take them over to your saw and cut them. So I'm just gonna lay these where I want them, mark them again, and then cut them to size. Now for this last one, I'm using that cedar picket that was left over. And again, I'm just going to cut my roof at a 45 degree angle, mark the middle just like I did the last one and cut down at my angles. This one, I'm not gonna give a roof, I'm just gonna make it really, really simple. And now for the fun part, I'm gonna make each one look just a little different from the next, but they will all kind of have a similar look too, that way I can display them together if I want, or in the same room and they all kind of mesh well together. So this first one that has the bigger one by two roof, I have a decal I'm gonna put on this one. Um, I'll talk more about this decal in a little bit. If you don't have this decal, I will have it in my Etsy shop, so I'll tell you more about that later. This one is going to get a buffalo check pattern to it. I'll tell you more about that when we get there. And this one I'm going to give a whitewashed and weathered wood look to and it's also going to get a wreath on the front. Let's go ahead and start with the decal one and I'll take you through each one and all of the steps you can see how to create your own. All right, so for this first one, I'm gonna paint the house itself with white chalk paint, and the roof one by twos are going to get a coat of this acrylic paint in the color traditional burnt umber. All right, so everything is nice and dry now, and before I add my roof onto the top, I wanna to add my decal to the front. Uh, I will have this in my Etsy shop, which is crossinmyheart.com, and I'll link that in the description box below too, if you want to create your own little house, or these decals work really great on all kinds of different materials, from plastic to glass to ceramic wood, um, you can put them on walls, you can do all kinds of different things with them. And if you order it from my Etsy shop, they will come ready to go just like this with this transfer tape that I'm peeling back already applied to the front. If you have a vinyl machine, I used Oracle number 51 matte black vinyl. That's what I use for all of my wood signs. Um, and I'm just going to remove the decal from the paper backing, I'm just using a squeegee. You take your time because it takes a little bit of work to get it to transfer cleanly. You don't want to go too fast or else you're, you'll ruin your design. And sometimes you'll have this too, where some of your paper backing might peel up with your vinyl. You don't want that because then your decal will not stick. But it comes off on the transfer sheet. You just line it up onto whatever you're going to apply it to. You have a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room. The uh, transfer sheet is not super duper sticky. 
So you can kind of adjust it a little bit here and there. You want to be more careful if you're going to apply it to glass because that will um, kind of static clean your decal to it. But with wood, it, it just it has a little bit of wiggle room. So once you have it located on your piece where you want it, you come back in with a squeegee or something hard that you can press all of your decal onto the wood to transfer it. You want to get all the air bubbles out. And then you just peel your transfer sheet slowly away. And then you are left with your beautiful design on your wood. I have scaled this to fit this size wood really, really nicely. But like I said, you could put this on a on any kind of surface or even a, a square wood sign and it look really pretty too. And now I'm just going to use some glue to add my wood to the top. All right, so I have that one sitting back there drying and I'm gonna start working on this one. This is the Cedar Picket. Like I said, I wanted to give this one a weathered wood look. So it's gonna get one coat of the gray chalk paint first and then it's gonna get two dry brush technique type coats over it where you just kind of fan it on and let some of that gray show through. Once the paint is dry, I will add a cute little wreath to the front. All right, so I am absolutely loving the way you can still see some of that wood grain come through the paint, even though it's painted. And that's why I went ahead and used this rustic type wood for this finish. So it really have an authentic kind of look. So now I'm gonna use this greenery. I wanna say I got it from Walmart in their floral section. You might be able to find it in craft stores too. And it was even in Target dollar bins at one point during the Christmas time. So I have some wire cutters. I'm gonna cut it down to size, make a little mini wreath with it, and just use my hot glue to attach it to the front. And now for the last house, we are gonna give this a buffalo check finish too. So this is the one by six with the stir stick roof. And I've already done a full in-depth tutorial on how to paint buffalo checks. So I'm just gonna kind of hurry through this process. But if you're interested in hearing about more of the details of how to do this, check the iCards, check the description box below. You can go watch that video and that will explain everything. But basically I have three different color paints. I have white, gray, and black. The first layer is going to be the white. Now that the white paint is all dry, we're gonna create our stripes. So I have some painter's tape here. This is about the one inch size. And I'm gonna put one stripe right down the middle. Press it smooth. And then you're gonna notice as I go along here, I'm gonna create sort of a row of tape. I'm gonna put three right next to each other but then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna remove the middle one. And what that does is it gives us an evenly spaced apart line. And we're looking for a checkerboard type pattern. So we need those even squares when we're all finished. So as you apply this, just make sure you put your placeholder in, butt up one next to it, 
and then remove the middle one. So that's basically all we have to do for this step. I'm gonna add my gray chalk paint to this, let it dry, and I'll come back and show you the next step. So here's our first set of stripes. I'm gonna turn this to this side so now our stripes are running left to right. And then I'm gonna do the same process, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start in the middle, about where the middle would be, probably not exactly the middle, but I don't wanna work from the bottom up because I don't want a row of boxes like perfectly at the bottom. I kinda wanna just work on this and make it sort of more random. So go ahead and use my my placeholder method again and fill this whole thing with more painter's tape and paint another layer of gray. Now this layer of paint is dry and we're gonna leave the, the tape on this and turn it back the original way we had it and add the original tape lines back. So you can kind of see there are some light gray spots. That is where we're gonna put our tape. Like I started in the middle and worked my way out. That's exactly where we need to put our tape back over. So you wanna be careful to make sure you get it perfectly lined up and then work your way out. So now that I have my tape replaced back on the horizontal lines, I'm gonna come back in with black paint and hit all of the open areas. I also want my roof to be black, so I'm gonna paint my stir sticks black, let it dry, then I'll come back in and we can take the tape off. And now for the fun part, we're gonna take the tape off and reveal our magic buffalo check print. This is always so, so fun. It's like magic. And it's it takes a little bit of time. Keep a hair dryer on hand. That makes the drying process go lots more quickly. But you can buffalo check on the surface of so many different things and give that farmhouse look so, so easily with just three colors of paint. So there is our buffalo check. I have my paint stir sticks. I'm gonna use my tacky glue again to glue them onto the top and it'll be finished. And there is a look at the roof glued on. I have a little bit of a smudge here, but it'll dry clear. Uh, and I will make sure to put a link in the description box to the paint stir sticks that I used for this, that I use for so many different projects. And I'll also link the decal, the Let's Stay Home decal in the description box below as well if you wanna check those out. Thank you all so, so much for joining me for today's tutorial. I hope that it inspired you. Please take a second and give this video a thumbs up for me. That helps out my channel so, so much. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button next to me. You'll find more DIY tutorials you wanna check out linked below that. And also come find me on Facebook and on Instagram for even more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.